not many films in the history of Hollywood have achieved cult status. But if a movie becomes a hit, the whole crew becomes very in demand. All the major studios want to work with the producers, the directors are offered projects with huge budgets, and the actors expect all kinds of awards and eternal fame. American Beauty was no exception. Producers and the studio earned a lot of money. Sam Mendes and Kevin Spacey got their Oscars, and it seemed that two catchy young actresses would soon become superstars. But something went wrong. Today we want to look back at them and see why they couldn't make it in Hollywood. Thora Birch comes from showbiz parents. Jack Birch and Carol Connors were adult film stars, they both appeared in the infamous porno Deep Throat. They named Thora after the Norse god of thunder. It must have been an exciting childhood. Birch's parents were reportedly reluctant to let their daughter enter the showbiz. Given their histories, it's easy to see why. Birch appeared on the big screen in 1991 in the country drama Paradise, which starred then-married couple Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith. Birch was joined by child actor and future Hobbit Elijah Wood. Later that year, Birch starred in the holiday not-so-classic, All I Want for Christmas. She played a precocious child with an elaborate scheme to have Santa Claus reunite her divorced parents. All I Want for Christmas has a rare 0% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And in the 90s, the career of the very young Thora was quite bright. She appeared with Harrison Ford in the Patriot Games, with Sarah Jessica Parker in Hocus Pocus, with Willem Dafoe in Clear and Present Danger. In 1994, Birch starred opposite Harvey Keitel and a Capuchin Monkey in Monkey Trouble. Someone assumed that putting a cute kid and a monkey on screen together would be box office gold. But Monkey Trouble received mixed reviews and was disappointed at the box office. In 1995, Birch appeared as part of an ensemble in Now and Then. Now and Then told the four childhood friends who reunite as adults to relive the summer of 1970. Critics panned the sappy coming-of-age drama. Roger Ebert dismissed it as a gimmicky sitcom. Despite the critical drubbing, Now and Then opened second at the box office behind Get Shorty. It grossed nearly $30 million on a $12 million budget. Over time, the movie has developed a cult following, and there was talk of turning it into a TV series. Birch and Suveri appeared in 1999 with central roles in the Academy Award-winning American Beauty. Suveri played a high school Lolita who tempts Kevin Spacey into his fantasies. The role is more complex than it appears, as with most things in American Beauty. Birch plays a high school cheerleader who is mortified when her dad, played by Kevin Spacey, starts flirting with her best friend. Since Thora Birch was barely 17 years old when she made the film and thus classified as a minor in the United States, her parents had to approve her brief topless scene in the movie, and they and child labor representatives were on the set for the shooting of it. Kirsten Dunst, Sarah Michelle Gellar and Katie Holmes were all offered Suveri's role but turned it down. Director Sam Mendes changed the appearance of the girls as the movie progressed. As Birch's character gains confidence, she wears less makeup. American Beauty was a great film, and everyone involved got lots of buzzes. Sure, most of it was about Kevin Spacey, but even Wes Bentley got a career boost from being associated with such a highly praised film. For her part, Suveri was featured in the movie's most iconic image. Suveri lying naked in rose petals is unforgettable. American Beauty was a hit at the box office. It was praised by critics and won many awards, including Best Picture. With a budget of 15 million, the film managed to raise an incredible 356 million. After such success, the careers of young actresses would be perfect. Birch also had a small, uncredited role in the Natalie Portman's Susan Sarandon drama, Anywhere But Here. Later in 2000, Birch played royalty in the fantasy film, Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons were based on a popular role-playing game familiar to nerds everywhere. The cast included Marlon Wayans and Jeremy Irons, who was cashing in on his Oscar win. Reviews were terrible, and the movie flopped. 2001 was the first year that Thora played to significant roles in one year. Birch starred opposite a then-unknown Kira Knightley in the British horror movie, The Hole. The film centers on four friends, who skip a school field trip in favor of a private party in an abandoned bunker. Later that year, Birch starred opposite a then-unknown Scarlett Johansson and the always terrific Steve Buscemi in Terry Swiggiff's indie comedy Ghost World. Birch and Johansson played friends whose lives go in separate directions during the summer after high school. Birch's character befriends a lonely middle-aged man played by Buscemi. 
She spends the summer trying to set him up on dates. Despite excellent reviews, Ghost World wasn't a hit at the box office. In 2003, Birch turned to Lifetime for the TV movie, Homeless to Harvard, The Liz Murray Story. As Lifetime movies go, it must have been pretty good, as it was nominated for several Emmys, including one for Birch. In 2004, Birch had a small role in John Sayles' political comedy Silver City. Chris Cooper played a George Bush surrogate. Birch played an assistant to an underground reporter played by Tim Roth. Silver City was released while Bush was running for re-election. But it received a minimal release. It was played in 162 theaters in the United States. And a film with a budget of 5 million was expected to fail at the box office. And after the failure of all these films in which Thora played the lead role, her career began to go down the drain. These mainly were movies coming out direct to video. In 2010, Birch's career was dealt a crippling blow. She was scheduled to make her nice stage debut in an off-Broadway revival of Dracula. Four days before the play was supposed to open, Birch was fired and asked to leave the theater immediately. Once again, Jack Birch had supervised every detail of his daughter's performance during rehearsals. When he saw another actor giving Birch a back rub, he demanded that the actor stop. The actor in question explained that he was following directions from the play's director. This led to Thora Birch being terminated. Since then, Birch has been virtually exiled. It's hard enough for a child actor to transition into more mature roles. Birch seemed to be making that transition better than most. But whether it was a lack of talent, a bad agent, or the wrong roles that prevented Thora from taking the next step in his career, Suveri started modeling as a preteen. This led to commercials, which led to TV work. As a teenager, she started doing TV appearances. In 1995, she appeared on an episode of Boy Meets World during the show's second season. In 1997, Suveri leapt to the big screen in the indie teen drama Nowhere. Nowhere was the third film in director Greg Akeri's Teen Apocalypse trilogy. Suveri co-starred with up-and-coming teen actors like Heather Graham and Denise Richards in A Story of Debauched Teenagers. In 1998, Suveri had another small role in the indie comedy, The Slums of Beverly Hills. Slums didn't make much of an impression with critics or audiences when it was released. But it has developed a cult following over the years. 1999 was easily the biggest year of Suveri's film career. It started inauspiciously enough with the troubled horror sequel, The Rage Carry 2. Suveri was fortunate enough to die early in the film. The Rage went through several production delays and a last-minute switch in directors. So it's no surprise that the film received negative reviews and was bummed at the box office. Later in 1999, Suveri appeared as part of the ensemble cast in Paul Waits's raunchy teen comedy American Pie. To sell his script, Adam Hurst titled it, Untitled teenage sex comedy that can be made for under 10 million that most readers will probably hate, but I think you will love. He lays it all out in the title. He even included the budget. Once the project was picked up at Universal, it was retitled East Great Falls High, then Great Falls, and finally, American Pie. Alison Hannigan was originally offered Suveri's role. But after reading the script, she found the band Geek more interesting. The movie had to go before the MPA rating board four times to secure an R rating. Reviews were mixed, and the movie was a huge surprise hit at the box office. Several members of the Pie cast seemed poised for stardom. Jason Biggs, Tara Reid, Sean William Scott, Shannon Elizabeth and Suveri all seemed viable candidates for movie stardom. A few of them found success in the short term, but ultimately, they could have lived up to the high expectations. In the same year, American Beauty elevated Suveri to the rank of one of the brightest young actresses. So, where did Suveri go wrong? She followed up Pie and Beauty by reteaming with Jason Biggs for another youth comedy, Loser. This seems like a good idea on paper. After all, it was directed by Amy Hackerling, who had helped launch Alicia Silverstone onto the list with Clueless, and helped to find the high school movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High. But Loser lived down to its title. Reviews were terrible, and audiences growing sick of teenage romantic comedies gave it a pass. In 2001, Suveri had three major releases. The first was Sugar and Spice, in which Suveri again played a cheerleader. Sugar and Spice wanted to be a dark, satiric high school comedy. But after the failure of the similarly themed black comedy, Jawbreaker, Sugar and Spice was rewritten to be less edgy. As a result, the movie didn't have any bite. It got bad reviews and bombed at the box office. Like the rest of the cast of American Pie, Suveri returned for the sequel. 
but her role was cut back to an extended cameo. Why? Likely because Suveri's dance card was already full. Most of the young cast was falling over themselves to appear in the sequel. But, you couldn't help but get the impression that Suveri was in the film to fulfill her contractual obligation. Also in 2001, Suveri appeared in the swashbuckling Three Musketeers update. This could be the project that could help Suveri's career and make the final transition from being a cheerleader to an adult role. The Musketeer was a strange mix of swordplay and Hong Kong wirework that didn't catch on. Reviews were terrible, and the movie failed. The film, with a budget of 40 million, was able to collect at the box office only 34 million. But after The Musketeers, it was the continuing of a nasty streak. By 2002, Suveri was trying to reinvent herself. She went indie in the drug-themed comedy, Spun. Initially, the movie was intended to be a documentary about meth cooks. But after three days of driving meth, the movie's writer and director decided he's made a scripted movie instead. Spun got terrible reviews and lost money. Later that year, Suveri starred up as a James Franco in Nicolas Cage's directorial debut, Sonny. Like Spun, Sonny got negative reviews and was ignored by the art house crowd. Just three years after starring in American Beauty and American Pie, Mina Suveri's Hollywood career had more or less dried up. Mina also appeared in seven HBO series, Six Feet Under episodes. Suveri landed a role on a prestigious premium cable show at this point in her career. Suveri, in 2005, was already getting minor roles in various films. Domino, Edmund, rumor has it, not only were her parts small, but all of these projects were a complete failure. Mina had a lot of potential comebacks in 2005, but none of them paid off the way she probably hoped they would. Suveri wouldn't make another mainstream Hollywood movie for seven years. Instead, she languished in direct-to-video trash like the remake of Day of the Dead. In 2012, Suveri returned to the big screen for the fourth theatrical film in the American Pie series, American Reunion. The entire cast of the original film returned for the sequel. Mina was among the first to agree to return and was paid a fraction of what Jason Biggs and Allison Hannigan received. Her fee was $750,000. This was the last successful appearance of an actress in a movie. After American Reunion, her career consisted mainly of B-movies and appearances in TV series some episodes. In retrospect, Suveri's career might have turned out differently. If The Musketeer had been a hit, Suveri might have had a career in action movies. She also tried to break into independent films when the Hollywood offers dried up. None of the projects she picked met with success. The argument could be made that Suveri's banner year in 1999 was a fluke. It almost certainly was. Now the actress is 43, and it seems she does not think about stopping and plans to work a lot. So in 2022, she has participated in seven projects. Maybe someday she even wants to break Eric Roberts' record.